When thinking about addressing climate change, do we have the institutions we need? And if the answer is no, what can we do about it? My name is Jose Maria Valenzuela. I'm a doctoral student at the University of Oxford, and I'm gonna to talk to you about knowledge brokers and the decarbonization of electricity systems. As I say, I'm a doctoral student at the University of Oxford at the Blavatnik School of Government. I'm also an active member of the Oxford Martin School program on integrating renewable energy. I previously studied in Mexico, China, and Chicago in the United States. I've worked for the Ministry of Energy in Mexico and for several international organizations that work on decarbonization. So let me get back to the question, do we have the institutions we need? This is not the first time someone makes this question. In fact, the Electricity regulator in the UK launched uh, earlier this year a review of the system operator because, well, the UK has new targets of net zero by 2050 because last year we saw events like the power cuts in the London metropolitan area. So it is worth to ask, does existing arrangements meet the challenges? And how proactive can the system operator be in the future? What I do for my research is go to the field, go to a number of places to talk to policymakers, to transnational actors with a lot of knowledge, to system operators like the ones we see in this picture of the control room of the Mexican system operator, Senase, to understand how they have changed knowledge. How do policymakers get the latest knowledge to make the best and the smartest decisions for integrating more renewable energy? There's a lot of RRT among cases, and this is very interesting to learn about Mexico, China, Chile, and the UK, four cases I study, initially started in a very similar institutional design. The system operator would be part of a generation company that would be publicly owned. In time, in the 1980s, 1990s, uh, and even more recently, there's been a lot of institutional reforms in these four countries a lot of institutional diversity and a lot of experimentation with different arrangements of how the system operator should look like. What I've done in the last two years is to visit these four countries, capital cities like Beijing, Mexico City, Santiago de Chile, London, but also other interesting places like, for example, Cuernavaca in Mexico or Birmingham in the UK to talk to not only policymakers, but actors within system operators. What I've done is to visit these four countries, to conduct more than 60 interviews with policymakers, system operators, and other stakeholders in the industry. The type of results that I get from this research initially look like this. What we can see, for example, is that the Ministry of Energy and on the left, in red, talks to very different actors from the ones that the state-owned company on the right side of the diagram, the electricity company would talk to on a regular basis. This is very helpful to understand how decision-making knowledge sharing happens through, for example, the participation of the system operator, both talking to the grid company or to the electricity company and to the government itself. But let me be more precise with another case, with the case of China. What we know from the literature from China is that, well, we have a state council that makes all the relevant policy decisions. We have the grid company and other generation companies. And in between them, there's an energy agency. Uh, that is supported by a public energy research institute and that gets also feedback from a trade association, the China Electricity Council. Based on the fieldwork that I conducted, we can know more about other actors that are relevant in decision-making and knowledge sharing in China. For example, GIZ, the German Development Cooperation Program, or the Danish government through their own institutions collaborate with the Energy Research Institute in China through a China National Renewable Energy Center. They are very relevant for some of the renewable energy decision-making. There's also local planning institutions. Uh, these are very old research institutes that are very knowledgeable and very powerful in many ways to help the government make decisions. But these actors in red are hardly discussed in our understanding of how policy is made, not only in China, but in other places in the world. These type of factors are knowledge brokers that we need to understand much better. Because we're not only about to see an energy revolution from the technological perspective of things, 
as for example, we're seeing in a country like Chile that is rapidly displacing coal generation to integrate much more renewables. It's also the case of the UK, but this is also about a social revolution. Uh, while I was doing my research in Chile, there was a number of social large demonstrations that you might have heard of. This can be inspiring because we need to think of all the instruments in the system, like this police truck, to be repurposed to serve other uh, ideals, as protesters have turned the police bus into a piece of art. A number of things that I've learned in this research is that it's more than just unbundling and liberalization. The UK, for example, has initiated a process of separation of the system operator office from the National Grid Corporation. This is a relevant step, but this is not only because it supports a process of liberalization, but because they can work with local knowledge brokers in different ways. And we need to understand how this process happens. Independence of the system operator is in itself a means to an end, decarbonization. And the separation of the system operator should help this process of integrating more renewable energy. But we also need to rethink the processes of centralization, not as something that goes against market economies, but a way of re-engineering knowledge exchange to allow policymakers to make smarter and more swift and rapid decisions. Thank you for listening. I hope you find this work interesting.